92% of households that start the year with Peloton are still active a year later. 92% because of a bike? Not just bikes. We also make treadmills and rowers. Oh, let me guess, for elite athletes only, right? Nope. It doesn't matter if you're an avid exerciser or new to working out. Peloton can help you achieve your fitness goals. 92% stick with it. So can you. Try Peloton bikes, tread or row, risk-free with a 30-day home trial. New members only. Not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. everybody welcome to the loud spot i'm your host sebastian i'm sitting here with miss ava gore who is joining us on this wednesday was not able to make it on monday but i hope everything worked out for you on monday <laughs> did it um kind of i'm still in kind the process <laughs> okay okay and then tiffany Flybarger with attic echo hey tiffany hello and you are no stranger to the show either i think you've been on quite a few times normally when sam's on this is the first time Ava and Tiffany have been on together. Lots of estrogen. I can kind of feel it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> unnecessary. <laughs> I'm always kind of a little bit. I'm always a little <laughs> unnecessary. That's okay. true. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Should be no news uh, for people who watch the show. So, Tiffany, Attic Echo, let us know a little bit about what your company does. Okay, so at Attic Echo, my main focus is writing and distributing press releases and just kind of getting any band that I work with out into the media as far and wide as possible, um, getting them heard by as many ears and getting them seen by as many eyes as I can. Okay, and when, now when did you start Attic Echo? I started in September of last year, um, so I've not even been doing this a year yet. Oh, wow. What made you decide to jump into starting a PR company? Um, So I worked with Frame the Stage. Um, I did music press, which is kind of a shoot off, kind of the other side of what I do. Um, And I really just kind of wanted to help out the bands because I seen them not really getting as much press as I'd like them to Mm -hmm. and not getting them heard as much as I think they should be. Um, And also just to kind of offer an affordable PR company because some of the ones are a little bit more expensive and may not work with some of the smaller guys. And I just kind of wanted to help them out. How does one start a company like this? Um, Really kind of knowing a few people. I think that's about that. I think that's about the best idea of it. Um, As soon as you know a band that wants to work with you and wants to give you a shot, then, um, then you kind of just go from there and you kind of build a list of contacts and uh, start sending it out to people that you know, people that you've kind of built that relationship with and just go from there. Who was the first band that you decided, or that decided they want to work with you? Was it like a mutual thing? Did you reach out or was it kind of like a friend that you decided, let me see if I can kind of get my feet wet in this and see what happens. Um, So the first band I worked with was then falls the sky. Um, I'm willing to bet nobody's really heard of them, but <laughs> a little maybe <laughs> um, they might be watching now. I don't know, but um, they're a local band out of Columbus, and I had known them for maybe a year or two, um, and done some press with them with Frame the Stage, and they had reached out to me and wanted to know a little bit more about how they could get out there you know, to other press outlets. And that's just kind of what fired it all off. 
Okay. And now we don't want to give anyone away any industry industry secrets. We don't want people to be like, oh, I can do this also. Let me get secrets from Tiffany. She just started. Let me be a competitor. But I do think bands that are maybe interested in wanting to use you as their PR uh, may be interested in exactly how you get their band press. So do you reach out to blogs, um, different online forums? What is it exactly you do to get them heard um, that Attic Echo does to help them out? So the first thing I do is obviously, you know, talk to the band, get an idea of what they're looking for. Um, if they're looking to get more reviews, then I try to go that route. Um, if, if they're looking for interviews, I try to go that most of the bands I work with are kind of just looking for all over the board and anything they can get. Mm -hmm. Um, so I end up writing a press release, um, which just puts together everything about the band, um, into this pretty little, you know, pretty little press release and tie it up with a bow and send it out to <laughs> and, and hope that it catches their attention. Um, and I mean, I'm basically sending it out to blogs. I'm not doing anything that a band can't do, except for it takes a lot of time and a lot of right. effort and a lot of emails. How many connections would you say you have? Um, my full press, my full press list probably contains about 400 different blogs. Oh, and, wow. Um, 400 to 500, but probably closer to 400. Nice. So, so when you send them out to this say these 400 blogs, do you blast all of them or do you pick and choose which ones? And then do only some of them pick up what you wrote and some of them say, not this time, try again, try again with another band or sometime later. <laughs> so, so most of them, I never hear back from at all. Um. Well, they know, but, but you know what, you know, you may not hear back from them now, but they know who you are. And the more you keep on emailing them, eventually they're going to be like, Let's just see what this chick's talking about. And then they're like, oh, this is awesome. Let's let, you know, so you just never want to, you never want to give up. So is there like your standard that come to you every time? Like, let's, let's, let's check it out. Let's do it. Yeah, I definitely have some regular people that I work with, like Stay Noisy. Um, I've, I've built a little bit of a relationship with State at the Scene at this point. Um, I've worked with Metal Injection and Not Fest. Cool. Uh, so, I mean, I definitely have some ones that I can reach out to that I'm a little bit more likely to hear back from because I've built a relationship from, with them. Uh, and that's the biggest thing that a lot of bands don't realize is it's, it's a lot about the relationship that I'm building. Um, they can cold email anybody they want to. They can find any email that they want to find. Um, but I have that built-in relationship that I might get them heard a little bit easier. Right. Are there, would you say that there are some bands that come out to you and they want you to do some press for them and not to be, not to be negative, but do you kind of say, Hey, not right now. Uh, are you at that stage yet? I know you've been only been doing it, you know, a little bit, almost a year. Um, has that happened yet? And do you foresee that happening? What would you say if that hasn't happened? So there have been bands that have reached out to me and wanted to work with me and, in some cases, it's just that I'm not into their music and I don't feel that I can be beneficial to them. Mm -hmm. um, and in other cases, I, I don't feel that their project is is relatable to what I'm doing and I don't have enough contacts that will help them. Um, now, that being said, that uh, that doesn't mean that um, that they're not good or they're not worthy of PR. It's just not for me. Um, in some cases, I will refer them to other people that I know that do PR mm. um, that might be a little bit more receptive to their music. Um, right. So, I mean, yeah, it's happened, but uh, there's a chance that it might happen more. I don't know. If, as you grow up, probably, well, Dawn brings up an interesting point. She says that is the most important, having an understanding and having a relationship with the bands and a relationship with the different companies. Um that you want to work with, but also having a relationship with the bands is important because if you don't really feel their music or don't necessarily jive with them, I guess you're not going to push them as much as you would a band that you really, that you really enjoy. And when it comes down to, you know, it's, it's all about money, but if you're trying to grow your brand, the money will come later as long as you stick to what you think you believe is going to work best for you. Yeah. I mean, my goal isn't to, 
I'm not making a ton. I, I, I'll put that straight out. I'm not making, you know, millions of dollars a year doing this. I'm doing Why not? This- <laughs> not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Um, but I'm doing this because I love the bands that I work with and I love the music they're creating and, and I want them to succeed. It's really about wanting to help them more than it is about the money. Yeah. Do you only work with metal bands? No. Uh, I also work with Animal Sun and Cannibal Kids. Um, yep. Animal Sun is electro pop. Uh, Cannibal Kids is more indie pop, kind of what they like to call Japanese inspired pop, I guess. Um, so yeah, I, I've, I've branched into more of the pop scene as well. Let's talk, let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about your music, your musical background. Uh, Cause I know you're a huge fan. We've talked about this on the show before. And then before we talked, you're a huge fan of Hawthorne Heights. Uh, you followed their career for quite a while now. What is your musical background besides obviously doing this what what influenced you to do it was just going to concerts and i and i know you and, and you're known to be like you already asked that question why'd you ask that question again you said that to me so many times but a different spin on it let's talk about your musical background and the concerts and stuff like that <laughs> yeah so i grew up in a in a household where my dad was always playing music um Can't relate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he listened to Black Sabbath. He listened to The Who, The Guess Who, uh, a lot of those bands. My mom was more into like Journey and and some of those. So I was kind of just destined to be involved in music in some degree. Um, plus, my uncle was also a kind of a radio DJ uh, at, a, at a college, actually the college I went to um, for some time. Um, so it's just always kind of been involved, but also leading into to the concerts. Uh, I started going when I was a teenager and just kind of fell in love with the local scene and some of the people in it and just kind of the the camaraderie and, and everything that came along with it and going out to shows and being accepted and just feeling part of the entire music scene. Is, is Hawthorne Heights the first band you were like, these guys rock. Was like one of the. <laughs> I mean, it was probably the first band that I really started going to see a ton. That's why I've seen they're them. They're from. Times. Aren't they from your neck of the woods? Yeah, yeah, they are. They're they're based in Dayton. Okay, uh, yeah, about forty five minutes away from me. Um, but actually, I'd say probably the one of the first bands, or maybe a couple of the first bands that I really started getting into were Simple Plan and Good Charlotte. Um, oh, that yeah. was like 10 or 11. So <laughs> nice. I started wearing, I started wearing eyeliner because of good Charlotte. <laughs> if I had hair, I still would. I just don't have hair anymore. It just doesn't look as good. You know, it just doesn't look as good. Sharon says, animal son, break out. The being, on the sh- being on the show reminds me too often of my emo days, I think. <laughs> oh, being on this show? Yeah. 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 You know what? I, I swear I would so still wear eyeliner. It just, I just got to wipe it off every morning before I go to work. Got and then, like, the baby oil gets in your eyes from wiping it off, and then you, like, see blurry. It's not, I get old and lazy, and I don't want to do it anymore. Now it's about well, comfort, not style. I have to put on Ralph's eyeliner whenever we play so <laughs> i don't think <laughs> guys are good at it. you should have seen me in high school just all black eyeliner all the time yes <laughs> let's talk about price so let's say bands are going to watch this and watch on youtube later maybe because someone watching now pricing wise so first let's go through it they send you maybe a demo song right is that kind of typically how it works out either one that they're looking to push or something that they have recently done and they're kind of in the process of making new music. Okay, so let's say this band's awesome. I like their style. I like their energy. I like their music. I like their look, okay? So you like all those things about the band. Then they're going to ask you, what can you do for us? You're going to put them on the blogs, things like that. But do you have different pricing? And are they kind of standard or does it change – does it change? Does it change? If you like the band more, do you charge them less? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, no, but, but, no but is there a standard pricing that you go by, like a menu? Yeah, there's definitely a standard pricing that I that I go by. And probably the bands I work with will be like, what? You don't charge us that because I've recently upped my prices. Um, 
So any bands that I work with now, um, if they come in and they work with me on retainer, so I'm with them okay. monthly, um, I'm charging them a hundred dollars, um, which is not bad. Uh, it's really not bad at all. <laughs> uh, and if I'm working with them per release, then I'm charging them 300. Um, okay. So that's one that kind of comes in. I work with them for a couple months and then they kind of disappear, go off until they want to work with me again for another release. So is, so is it contract? So do you have, so if it, someone's going to keep you on retainer, is it like a yearly contract that you, that you do for them? Cause if you said, if you do it just per release, you charge a little more, it's a one-time deal, right? It's just one release. So is it contract? Cause what someone says, yeah, we'll keep you on retainer. And then like a month later, like two months out, they they Let's see ya. I mean, I don't really work on contract. It's it's more of a handshake deal, but there's no handshake because we're not in person. Um, so it's just kind of a verbal thing. They can walk it anytime they want to. If they're not happy with what I do, then they're more than happy to find somebody else. Um, and there's no hard feelings. Uh, Diego says, Tiffany does more for the scene than most. Badass chick pushing the music. We all need to hear. That's a nice compliment. We just don't know it yet. So who is Diego? He works at Asylum Radio Network. Um, okay. If you're familiar or not. Um, but I, I, I think I think I've heard I think I've heard of that. Uh, he's kind of one that's been there since the beginning that kind of helped me start press pushing some bands to press and just kind of doing a few reviews for me and sharing a lot of Attic Echo stuff and doing shout outs on on their live shows and things like that. So I appreciate Diego. Yeah, that's awesome. I, you know, I don't understand it coming from a, like a business mindset, right? Like I have the podcast, but in my non-musical world, I'm a business kind of person. Like I'm an entrepreneur. I don't understand it. And you know, and Tiffany, you're obviously friends with Sam. You work with Sam a lot, Diamond Noise, uh, who's the producer of the show and, and manages a lot of bands that you have that you do press kits for. I don't understand not having a contract because you can shake anyone's hand all day, but if you don't have the contract, they're just like, all right, we'll see you later. Don't you feel like you could per, me thinking, don't you feel like if you had that contract, it would solidify, um, so solidify your monthly income. The PR people we've worked with, we've never signed a contract. For. Really? <laughs> no. I would I, see. I would totally do. I would totally do contracts with them. So then you, you could just walk away also and not not think anything of it. Yeah. If I, if I'm not happy with a band, if if they're not following through with some things that that they should be doing, if they're not um, giving me content content on a regular basis and just communicating with me, because that's part of my thing is communication. Uh, I want to have regular communication with the band. If, if they're not being involved, then I can let them know, like, hey, this isn't working out. Um, I appreciate what you're doing and I love your music, but I I got to let you go because it's just not working out. And you're just paying me 50 bucks a month because that's my current retainer uh, until I, you know, work with a new band. Then I'm upping it. So, <laughs> right. um, so my current bands pay 50, uh, but my new prices are 100. Um, but yeah, so if, if it's just not working out, then I let them know, and it's just the end of it there. I feel like a contract really just kind of is, for lack of a better word, a trap. They're kind of stuck, and it brings in a whole legality thing, and it brings in some hard feelings and some difficulty that I just, I don't want the drama, and it's about helping them, not forcing them to stay with me. Right, and I get. I guess not. Not having a contract, I guess, also works out for you if they don't hold up their end of the bargain. You could just say, "See you later." Um, so I get. Ava, do you have any input on that? Uh, I mean, I I really don't see why a contract should be necessary in this type of interaction. Uh, we've never done it, like I said, and um, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, it's just. Uh, <laughs> It was not under contract to be on the show. <laughs> yeah, I'll be there when I can, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we just got a contract for from a record label, and it's taking us, you know, like a couple months or so to like deal with it. So it's just. Like, still working on that. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's just too much. <laughs> too much. It, it is a lot of legal stuff that can get in the way of just. 
like Tiffany, like you said, just helping out a band and being there for them. And it's kind of more of a friendly relationship at this point. I would assume as you grow, though, that might change if you wind up making a huge career out of it down the line. It possibly it could, maybe it won't. I don't know. But I guess you'll when that when that point comes, I guess I guess you'll find out. Do you work with a lot of because I know you like I said, I know you work with Sam and Diamond Noise. Do you work with other managers? Uh, band managers, touring, uh, booking agents, besides just Sam? Like, do they reach out to you? And is that kind of like a a network you want to get into? So I've, I've had a couple managers reach out to me and kind of pitch their band. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but so far, none of them have really panned out. Um, like Starless is a band that I work with. They're currently not managed. Uh, they're currently, they don't have a booking agent. Um, so I'm kind of just helping them along without those things. And that's perfectly okay too. Uh, I'm perfectly okay stepping in with a band that really has no idea what they're doing. No offense, Starless. But just somebody kind of in the local scene that really hasn't had their feet in the water to, to the industry and just kind of helping them out and, you know, just helping them along and figuring everything out too. How many bands do you work with now? Currently on my monthly roster, I have seven. Okay. Uh, do you think there's ever going to be a point where it's like too many bands to manage? Or do you think that's just... <laughs> uh, as far as like monthly, I'd say maybe about 10 would be my cap at this point. Um, and that, that also depends on how demanding the bands are, like how, how much I have to do for them, um, how much content they're releasing. If I have five bands that are releasing content monthly, I don't know if 10 bands are going to work out. Mm-hmm. But if I have 10 bands that are releasing something every two months, that's a little bit more manageable. Cool. You brought up a, an interesting point earlier, and I would agree with you on when you have a band that doesn't really know so much, and that is no offense to Starless, you know what, because you because what you want to do is you want to take them under your wing and do it your way and kind of show them how to do it. If you have a band that knows what they're doing or has done this for multiple times, everyone has <laughs> their own way of doing I'm sure you have your style of PR and the way you do it. You don't want someone else coming in saying you got to do this. You got to do this. I want you to do that. You do it the way you want to do it. And having other people that may may have had certain experiences or whatever, they might interfere with your flow of how you like to work. Is that accurate to say? I would say, yeah, because, I mean, some people in the industry aren't going to work well together. We all have different ways of doing things and we all have different ideas. And if we can't coordinate and cooperate, then that's probably not going to work. Um, like with Sam, because I do have so many bands that are also on his roster. Uh, we work well together. We know how each other work Mm -hmm. and just, it works out well for us to be working as a team. Um, but bringing somebody else in, you never know. Um, I'm typically pretty easy to work with. Um, but I also still have my own way, like the communication factor. If I have a manager that's not really communicating with me, Mm -hmm. Um, and just not really staying in contact, then we're probably not going to work well together. That's exactly how (laughs) we feel about adding another band member. (laughs) Like, it's just, you know, you're trying to get practices together and everyone has like their own things going on and, you know, just two people. It's really easy. (laughs) Yeah. Every time you add in another voice, you're adding in another potential headache. I mean, you never know how somebody's going to work. People can be super unreliable. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, difficult, depending. <laughs> you know, that's that's why even like, like Sam's on every now and again as a coast. He's obviously busy right now touring with Transient and doing that. Ava's on uh, one to two days a week. But if like let's say if Ava and Sam are not there, I I can still do the show. Like it's fine. I got this. It's my show. It's I can do whatever I want with it, you know. But it is it is easier when I wouldn't say it's easier. It's more fun sometimes interacting 
Um, especially with people like Sam and I have great chemistry. Ava says some funny shit sometimes. <laughs> I like completely. So, like, you think I say some crazy things? I mean, I do, but sometimes Ava, I'm like, Where, where'd that come from? <laughs> we both she kind of have that. That's what she does. No, she does. She does because she does call me out. But, <laughs> um, but I actually enjoy getting called out. I don't get all like, oh man, why'd you do that on my show? <laughs> why you gotta embarrass me like that? Emasculate me. <laughs> Emasculate me. I, wow, I know fine. you well enough that I'd call you out if I needed to. <laughs> yeah, no, I I think you have uh on well like I think you've actually messaged uh a comment while I'm talking to someone. <laughs> but I'm like I know. I do that. <laughs> I do that sometimes. That's okay, though. That's okay. And Tiffany did did put the loud spot on, uh, it's like a, I guess I call it an article. Maybe that's not the right word to use. What would you call it, Tiffany? I mean, a write-up, an article, a, a post. A forum. Uh, whatever. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it, it all says the same idea. Yeah, so uh, one, now Jack Stiers, are they under your uh, PR? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Jack Styries did a, we had a ghost stories thing and we talked about it and Tiffany actually wind up writing a, a, an article about it and then was able to plug the loud spot in there. I, th- I thought that was super cool. Like I was all excited. I, I must've texted like 20 people to do so. Tiffany, is there anything you want to say uh, before we get off the show? And then we'll leave the floor to Ava to ask any final questions about um, Attic Echo at all that maybe we didn't cover. Um, I guess as far as anything goes, just keep watch on my socials. Um, check out my website, atticecho.com, and just make sure you're keeping up with the bands that I that I work with. And if there's any bands that are interested in working with me, you can always reach out. Um, I'm approachable, I'm willing to talk. Um, let you know anything. If you have any questions, I'm willing to answer them. You don't have to know what PR is. I'll, I'll describe it. I'll let you know. Um, we can start at scratch and I'll let you know what I need and just go from there. PR stands for Puerto Ricans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. Sorry, I have to throw, I have to throw it out there. My bad. Right. <laughs> hey, we got anything? Um. What would you say the most challenging part of PR is? <laughs> Not hearing back from people. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah. When I'm trying to premiere something at like, you know, Loudwire or Knotfest or Metal Injection or just anywhere and, and not hearing back from them and then hearing back from them at the last minute, that's kind of a struggle. But I mean, I get it. I've worked on the press side. I understand that you can't always you can't always answer everything and and that's fine um but as far as anything else goes i think just building the relationships that that's probably difficult but it's the most worthy thing you can do nice and your articles are very well written i do have one final question for you have you ever written an article that somebody wanted you to you're working with somebody and they didn't respond like even though it was great it was well written they just either got busy didn't respond to it and kind of left you like, like hanging. Um, from which side? From from the press side or from the press side? Oh, and then I do want to talk about frame frame the stage, but it, but let's talk about that real quick. Has anyone just kind of left you hanging after you wrote something about them and not replied to you? Uh, I mean, yeah. are are you are you meaning like a press release, or are you meaning like? posting something up on say frame the stage and them not responding to it. So, okay. That, yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'll post something on frame the stage and it goes nowhere. Uh, it, it just happens. They either don't see it or their PR person may not have told them that they were placed there. Um, right. It, it happens. It is. Well, what it is. If anything gets written about you and Tiffany, please share it because I I was ecstatic about it. Like I thought it was super cool, and they should share it. You know, I, I think they should. And and you're such a fantastic writer, and what you put, and you really uh, make you really are positive when you're speaking about the bands, the articles that I've read that you have written, anyways. And then I do want to talk about Frame the Stage, uh, which you do work with Frame the Stage, right? Yeah, I'm I'm lead contributor, even though I've kind of slacked off a little bit lately. Uh, but I will get back to it, I swear. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, I do work with them. Um, back before COVID, I covered Bunbury in Cincinnati for them. Um, I'm not the owner, even though people tend to think that I am. <laughs> I, I just I run most of Frame the Stage. Well, cool. All right. If you are in a band and you are looking for somebody, some writers on you, do some PR, hit up Tiffany. And sh- if, if it works out, then that's fantastic. Tiffany, thank you so much for being on the show, sharing mm-hmm. what you do with the bands. I think you got some fans that were watching. I think that it's cool that you do it for the music and not for the money. And hey, that's what Ava and I we're doing it. Trust me, we don't make a penny off this. Yeah. Like maybe, maybe a penny. Maybe, <laughs> maybe a penny. Well, I don't make anything with frame the stage, so I get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But we do it for the love of music and you know, I just like I just like talking to people and so I'm and Ava shit. was talking <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, I like talking <laughs> shit. So yeah, go check out addictecho.com, right? And that's as e- that's easy. I'm like surprised you got that. That is fan fantastic. Uh Thank everyone for listening to The Loud Spot. We love it. And check out our, what What do I have? I have a Facebook. I have a <laughs> Spotify, Apple, YouTube. And subscribe to my YouTube. Like, don't just watch it. Subscribe to it. We really appreciate the subscribes because, you know, we don't have a lot. So we're looking, we're looking for pity subscriptions here. All right. I guess that's it. Are we out? Yes. Thanks All for right. having me. Yep. Stay yeah, right there, Tiffany. Sure. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> this is The Loud Spot outro by Nothing Short of Tragic. Is this all talk with no action? No. Is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the loud spot with Sebastian? Yes. Does nothing short of tragic have his back again? Yes. Does everything that's good really have to end? Yes. A big post has a pin show, so to get more episodes, make an order, this is over. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to click the like and share button. Don't forget to go to our YouTube and subscribe. If you want to listen to our audio and pick up some cool merch, go to www.theloudspot.net. Peace out. Rock on. 92% of households that start the year with Peloton are still active a year later. 92% because of a bike? Not just bikes. We also make treadmills and rowers. Oh, let me guess. For elite athletes only, right? Nope. It doesn't matter if you're an avid exerciser or new to working out. Peloton can help you achieve your fitness goals. 92% stick with it. So can you. Try Peloton bikes, tread or row, risk-free with a 30-day home trial. New members only. Not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial.